doesn't just want to uh, just give you something. He wants you to listen. He wants you to act upon what he gives you. So David goes out. He pursues the enemies who stole his stuff. Oh glory! David leaves that time of worship, that refuge place. Church, I see people go through crisis all the time. As a pastor for for so for so many years, I've seen the church and the people of the churches get into one crisis after another, and I've seen them go to a refuge place. But I'm here to tell you, there's only one refuge place the church ought to go to. Come on, and it is God Himself. I've seen people go to the refuge place of medicine. Come on, to get medicated or or, or counsel of of other people. And there's nothing wrong uh, with medication if you're on it, or or counsel of other people. I'm not trying to discredit or discriminate, but I'm talking about the refuge place that we need to go to where we can get downloaded our plan of, of a, our plan of escape of getting out of that crisis and getting through that crisis and getting back what the devil has stolen from us. It is time that the church start taking the battle to the enemy. Come on. It is time that we start taking the battle to the front lines of the enemy rather than rather than just go to the place of worship and the place of prayer and cry out to God and then expect God to come in and move on our behalf. It's time we rise up like the army of God and take the battle to the devil. Can I get an amen? Sometimes you need to go get back what's yours. We think that if we just pray, God will bring it back. I'm telling you, we have to rise up like a mighty army of God. Hallelujah. And go get back what is ours. Sometimes you need to take the battle right to the devil. Sometimes, and let me explain what that means. You, you begin to speak the right words over your future. Come on. You begin to declare the right words over your life. You don't sit there and just get engulfed with everything that's going wrong in your life and take all your problems and vocalize them to God. You begin to take the battle right to the problem and you begin to declare and speak over the problem that in the name of Jesus, healing comes. Come on. In the name of Jesus, my daughter rises up. In the name of Jesus, my son rises up. In the name of Jesus, my health, my finances, whatever it is, is in the hands of God. And Satan, you don't have your hands on it no more. Come on. But my life is in the hands of the living God. And you begin to take the battle right to the devil. Start declaring what your future is in Christ, not just what your situation looks like right now. The Bible says if we seek, we will what? Well, why not then? If we pursue, we'll possess. Think about that. If the Bible says if you seek, you will find. If you ask, you'll receive. If you knock, the door will be open. Why not if you pursue by revelation of the plan of God, will you not succeed in capturing the very thing that you're pursuing? Don't just settle for being a pursuer or a recoverer of God. Listen, be an overcomer. David didn't just go after the enemy and overtake the enemy and get all of the spoils back. That's where the church often stops. We want to we want to go back and get what's ours. Amen. And everybody gets pumped up and jazzed about that. Yeah, we're going to go back and get what's ours. But don't just settle for going out and fighting that devil and going and stealing and getting back, I should say, what he stole from you. Don't just let that battle end there. Because there's another thing that David did. The Bible says he overtook the enemy. You know what that means? He destroyed the enemy. Let me tell you why David did that. He didn't want his sons and his daughters to have to fight that same battle. Oh, come on. He didn't want his grandchildren to have to fight that same enemy again. He didn't want the generations that came after him to keep on having to fight those, those, those enemies that overtook him. So he didn't just get back everything, but he took care of that enemy. When David went to fight Goliath, Goliath how many stones did he take? He took five smooth stones. There was only one giant on that battle. Why did he take five? He was going to finish the job. Come on. He wasn't just going to go and defeat that enemy, but he was going to make sure that every generation after him didn't have to face that same enemy. He was going to be the warrior that God had called him to be. He didn't just pursue and overcome or pursue and regain, but he actually overcame that enemy. How many of you want your kids to face what you faced? How many of you want your grandkids to have to go through what you went through? How many of you are wanting those that come up after your genealogy uh, in your genealogy to have to, to face? Listen, it is time we begin to declare with the power of our words because there is life and death in our words. Come on. And we can speak it over the future generations that are coming after us. And we can declare. And listen, this was the life that David lived. This is how he overcame. He, when he went to face Goliath, he prophesied before he went. Do you know that? He spoke Goliath's death. He says, you come at me with a spirit. But I come at you in the name 
name of the Lord God. And you are going to fall before me on this day. And the birds of the air are going to eat you. Come on. He prophesied before he even went. And guess what? That prophecy came to pass. Come on. That word came to pass. Glory to God. When David defeated that giant, everybody was in awe. Come on. Everybody was amazed that David was able to do that. David goes out to the battle line. Here's this little, young, unskilled in military battle boy. Not even wearing armor. Not wear, not even carrying a weapon. Got some toy sling from Elko. Come on. He bought a little toy sling. And he's got that. And here's this Goliath. Just enormous. Fully engulfed in armor. Got a spear the size of a weaver's band. This thing weighs a ton. And he could have easily just defeated David. But David goes to that battle with full confidence in who he was. David goes to that battle, slings that stone, doesn't wait, listen, doesn't wait for the devil, doesn't wait for Goliath to make an advancement on him. He goes after the devil. Come on. He doesn't wait for Goliath to bring the battle to him. He takes it to him. Can I get an amen? Come on. He takes the fight right to the footstep, right to the doorstep of Goliath. He slings that stone and that giant falls down. Everybody in the Israel camp Everybody back under King Saul, they are all... Can you picture it? Here these two are, this epic... Remember, they've been there for days. Goliath has been coming out every day taunting the armies of the living God. Nobody in in Saul's army had the the guts to rise up or to stand against this giant. They all hid back there waiting for God to step in. Doesn't that sound like the church? Come on. waiting for I'm going to sit back waiting for God to step in and rescue me. God has sent a Redeemer. God has sent a Rescuer. God has sent a Restorer. His name is Jesus and what we do is we march under him and we put our faith and confidence in him. David goes to the battle. He takes Goliath out. Everybody in the Israel army goes, <gasps> everybody over on the Philistine side goes, <gasps> everybody's amazed and shocked and surprised except for David. Except for David. And there's a reason why. Because you see, David was a worshiper, and in his time of worship, he gets visions, he gets revelations, and he gets plans. And God earlier had allowed him to defeat a lion and a bear. So when he came to Goliath, and when he was explaining to King Saul, I'm not worried about that giant. Because in my youth, God, in a while back, God let me defeat a lion and a bear. And they're a whole lot more vicious than this uncircumcised Philistine. They're a whole lot meaner than him. And I've already got the victory, so I know that God's going to give me the victory here. David had a plan going in. So David wasn't worried about the enemy. He declares as he goes to meet the giant, you come at me with a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. David saw what the real problem was. What was the problem? It was Goliath. What did Israel see as the problem? Their inability. Remember when... I love it. Come on. Remember when Joshua and Caleb went into the land of the spies? They came back with the report that we can do it because God said we can do it. Come on. But everybody else saw the enemy, not the giants, but how they looked in the eyes of the giants. We are but grasshoppers. It is time you quit listening to the lies that Satan is speaking over you and all the things that he declares to try to intimidate you and make you think you ain't enough. You are more than enough. Come on. The Bible says you are more than a conqueror in Christ. And everything that raises up against you, you can put down under your feet because of the authority of Jesus. The problem wasn't, come on, the problem wasn't that they weren't big enough or strong enough. The problem was Goliath. And the answer was, in David, the answer was his faith and his plan that God had given him. Come on. So he took the, he took the, he took Jesus, he took the Lord to the problem. He took the look. Jesus says, I am the what that the church is built on. Come on. I am the rock. What did David sling at the giant? He slung a rock. He took the rock to the enemy. Come on. He took the rock to the giant. we got to get to where we're taking Jesus right to our problems. Not sitting there and taking our problems to Jesus. Oh, come on. Not take. Come on. We bring all our problems to God in prayer. God is saying, take me to your problems. Come on. Let me loose on your problems. Let me loose on your addictions. Let me loose on your insecurities. Let me loose on your bondages. Let me loose on the things that are trying to hold you back. Speak it. Speak it out over your problem. Take me to your problems. Amen. And then Saul, David's come there and Saul tries to convince David to put on his armor and wear his 
his skin, if you will. And what, listen, this is what Saul was declaring. And this would have been okay under different circumstances. But this is what Saul was declaring who had a life of compromise. Everybody say compromise. compromise. Saul lived a life of compromise to the Word of God. And that's what makes this wrong. Saul says, David, go out. Put on my armor. What he was saying was, go out in my name. Yes. Go out in my strength. Go out in my anointing. Go out with my gifts. Go out as my representative. And David realized that I can't do that. See,